Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I'm the Drifter, lovely to have you here. Um, as you can see from what's on your screen right now, we're going to be doing a bit of behind the scenes today. Um, nothing too major, it's not a full blown tutorial. This is just to give you an idea of what's gone on behind the scenes when it comes to what has got to be my first sort of like step video-wise towards having a consistent upload schedule. Um, obviously, it's not a perfect video. There's a lot I would have liked to have done had I had the time, but I didn't, or rather I did, but um, I didn't take advantage of that time very well. Uh, so, let's get into this. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that we have a black screen. Um, that's because the very first frame of the video is a black screen. Um, little tidbit here. I forgot about that because it's been that long since I opened it and spent about 20 minutes trying to figure out what was wrong with the composition. But um, we don't we don't acknowledge that. So uh, the first thing you're probably wondering is why I have the final version of the video over the top of the rest of the composition. And my reasoning for that was, whilst this was the whole video, as you can see from me strolling through it at 7 pixels per frame, um, there's no ending. It just cuts off abruptly. It just stops. Sorry about if I'm sniffling as well. I'm kind of... I have a cold because we're in England and the default setting for the weather is fucking rain. But either way, obviously because this thing had no ending, I had to give it one, which is what this extra space here between the end of the video and the end of the composition is. If we scroll down here, this is the ending. It's um, a tiny bit of a break, then we fade into an upside down and completely just fucked video. Um, as you can see, I did quite a lot here. Uh, I inverted it, I used the VHS filter, and then obviously that's just to fade it in and out. Uh, then over the top of here, we've got the ending text, which is, you know, follow me at Outcast Studios, ah ha ha, gotta get that plug in. And then obviously the next one is not that, because why the fuck did I click on that? What was the point? Why would I do that? The next one is, you know, make sure to show Wilbur and his new band some love, because, you know, we've got to get the credit in there. I'm not claiming that this is mine, we've got to, we've got to cover our bases here. Yeah. The next thing I want to show off that um that I'm quite proud of is my ability to integrate the whole uh there's no there's no lyrics here cuz they're not written thing into the actual song. Obviously those aren't the actual lyrics. This was ripped from a live stream. Um but I felt it would be kind of a ball ache trying to edit that together because I'm not good at music. I can't edit music. So instead I sort of embraced it and used these moments perhaps to show sort of um corruption to the to the video that we're watching because I don't know if I was able to communicate it clearly or not there is a small narrative here um the very first thing you open is home videos and sort of these things that are popping up are supposed to be videos inside of the home videos folder and come the end sort of you know they're corrupting here they're corrupting here and come the end sort of the only one left is this one and then eventually that one ends the operating system crashes, and then we get the ending of the video. Another thing I want to point out is something I got asked about quite a lot, uh, which was how I did this. This is an effect uh, ripped directly from one of Wilbur's uh, videos, uh, but I got asked a lot how I actually ripped it. Basically, if we if we go into uh, this piece of footage, if I can find it, I think it's is it this? No, it is not this. Uh, give me a second to just find it. I believe it's this? No, not that. Uh, this? No, not that. <laughs> Uno momento, por favor. Is it you? Oh, right. Maybe, maybe, guys, it's the com composition named Mouth that has the mouth in. I never would have guessed. I was the one that fucking labeled that as well. Right, but either way... Ew, that's disgusting. We're not going to look at this for too long, because, you know, ew. But, um, yeah, just isolate this for a second. Weird mouth thing. Um, 
as you can see, I applied the key light effect, which was to get rid of the background, because if you'll just bear with me for a second, what are you? Let's get off that. If you'll just bear with me for a second while I boot up the second composition, the one that's adjacent to this one, um, as you can see here, hopefully, if Future Me is doing this correctly, I, I don't have the original composition where I did this, but I do have a video I took of me doing it. Um, it should be playing in the background now, but basically, I screenshotted Wilbur's video, masked around the actual uh, shape, uh, and then once I'd masked around the actual shape, uh, I masked around the inside of the shape, set that to subtract to sort of get rid of uh, Wilbur's mouth. I feathered the masks out to make it look more presentable, and after that I worked on uh, getting rid of the black background, so I used Unmult for that. Uh, this isn't the final uh, piece of footage that I used, obviously you can tell there's a difference, but this was just to sort of show off how to get the mouth to work. As you can see, I also had to reposition the mask at one point um, because uh, changing the scale of the object uh, didn't fully work. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, just I'll let that play. And we're back. Sorry about that little intermission. I, um,. I don't plan things, I just sort of do them, and then hope that they turn out okay. Um, but yeah, as for how I got so many of these boxes to appear, you probably noticed it as I've been scrolling up and down the timeline. Uh, but if we just, um, if we just squeeze this in here, each one of these sort of slithers, these cuts, is their own individual, uh, box. It's their own individual error box. Oh, no, sorry, I'm mistaken. Each individual one of these particular cuts is actually the background being brought forwards, and as you can tell, color inverted, but not quite inverted. Oh, no, yep, yeah, this one is just straight up an inversion. Never mind. The actual slithers uh, for the boxes are down here. And as you can tell, more of them appear the further along we go. So, for example, yeah, this. Or each individual one of these is its own box. And when I tell you this took fucking ages to do, I mean it took ages to do. You can tell I got bored about halfway through because I stopped doing them every... How many, how many frames is that? Every 11 frames. Why did I choose 11? That's weird. But yeah. And then obviously you've got this bit here, which is... Um, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the bottom corner one. By the way, for those not in the know, and for those that wondered, this is how I actually got the boxes to work. Uh, what I did was I took um, I took an image of this box from Wilbur's video. Uh, obviously, it was very low quality because it was taken from a YouTube video that had a VHS effect atta attached to it. What I did then was I used a bunch of solids, and I sort of just masked out the shape of the boxes. So, for example, if I isolate this, this is the grey background. If I isolate this, this is the blue bar at the top. And if I isolate this, this is the uh, close, maximize, and minimize buttons. Um, now, I didn't make those myself. Those were just cut from the original thing, but because of how small they were, the the frame distortion sort of wasn't a big issue. Uh, and as far as the colors go, these are color matched exactly to the original Windows 95 ones. So, yeah, practically identical. I think that's everything I really wanted to cover in this sort of behind the scenes look at things. Um, there was a lot of footage that didn't really end up getting used, um, but that's just because it was very much just the same footage in a different location, and we didn't really need it. There was one particular line in here, which is the, um, I get turned on by my reflection in passing cars that I really wanted to put some footage to but I don't own a car I feel kind of weird going up to a stranger's car and just humping it so that didn't end up making the final cut um yeah this is actually my kitchen we we live in a in in a post nuclear war kitchen um but yeah 
But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, that was fucking freezing, by the way. I stood in the middle of gale force winds with that. You can tell it was gale force winds as well, because if we go into the actual footage itself, let's just isolate this. You can actually, no, let's not isolate it, let's just go into the original layer. You can see the fucking jacket get thrown into the wind when I press play. Like, it gets dragged back a lot, and considering how heavy that fucking thing is, that was impressive. Yeah. Let's end it on that note, shall we? A topless version of me stood in the middle of a fucking field. Um, if you've enjoyed this little behind-the-scenes look at things, um, then make sure to keep your eye out for the next one that's coming out. Uh, in two days' time, there should be the Owl House video, and obviously... Four days after that should be the there should be the behind the scenes video for it. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes out for that. And uh, that's all I really have to say. So see you later, shitlords.